The last video I released on this channel was about the ethics of cannibalism, and since I feel the need to loop everything back to my personal interest of zoology, I mentioned prions as a potential pragmatic negative of cannibalism, but I kinda glossed over it, a decision which I don't regret. I told you what you need to know, that eating undercooked human flesh allows prions to enter your body, and that no matter how long it takes, a prion will kill you with no cure. But let's talk about how exactly that happens. First of all, what is a prion? Well, I refer to it as a weird protein, but the technical term is misfolded, and to explain that, let's first talk about proteins and their role in the body. Proteins are incredibly important to the body. They run everything, and I mean everything. Muscle fibers, those are made of protein. Lungs, protein. Your bones, protein. Your blood, sweat, and tears are just water with a couple of proteins mixed. Well, actually, sweat doesn't really happen. And your genetic makeup reflects this. DNA is more or less a recipe on how to make proteins. Every three base pairs correspond to an amino acid. These are the things that are chained together by the ribosomes to make a protein. And the enzymes that oversee the whole process are... Do I even have to say it at this point? But back to the ribosomes. When it chains together all of the amino acids and makes a protein, it comes out like this. But proteins don't really look like this, and they wouldn't work if they did. It first has to be folded. We start like this, the primary structure. From there, it either becomes a Chad alpha, a helix, or a soy boy beta, a sheet-like secondary structure. The tertiary structure is where it bends up into three dimensions, and finally the quaternary structure is when it loops back around on itself and becomes a folded protein. Now this process is almost entirely automatic, the way that the chemicals are arranged with the bonding sites and like dipoles, that forces different parts of it together, but the process can be interfered with. Now not every protein that folds wrong is a prion. A prion is kind of the perfect storm of weirdness. When a protein is done folding, or in this case misfolding, it's sent out through the endoplasmic reticulum into the Golgi thing I've heard so many names given to it, which sends it through the cell wall. From there it's free to wreak havoc. Like I said at the beginning of the video, proteins control your body, but the most important proteins and the most dangerous prions are probably DNA polymerase. This controls the copying of DNA, and if messed up, it can lead to your DNA being constructed wrong. RNA polymerase, which controls the copying of RNA off of DNA, so it can be sent to control the protein making process. And then of course the myriad of proteins involved in the translation of a protein from genetic material. If you get it just right, a prion involved in this process can hijack it to create more prions. But that would be so improbable, right? There are so many moving parts involved in DNA, and a prion would have to change everything just right to make it work. But that's the scariest part about prions. They can evolve. Well, kind of. Evolve just means to change with purpose, and prions can definitely change. Different prions will emerge as slightly different conditions interfere with folding. But if one emerged that could create more prions, obviously that one would become the most widespread, because it was replicating itself. It's a microcosm of natural selection. So be wary of prions, don't eat someone without their consent, and remember, eating undercooked meat significantly increases one chance of foodborne illness. Hey, hey, hey!